So you had all that history with De La Hoya within the Olympics, the amateurs, the gold. And he never, and how, he still did you, how, did, how did a fight like you and him never happen? I, that, that's <laughs> what I need to know. Be, because he was riding a high horse. You figured when he when he came out of the Olympics, and anybody will tell you that, everybody will tell you that, when he went to the Olympics, he was the golden boy. They expected him to win a gold medal, which he did. And he was probably one of the first kids ever besides Meldrick and all them, because I think they got a package deal. But I know for a fact that when Oscar won his gold medal and he came home that day, he uh, he signed for a million dollars. Because I'll never forget when we was in camp training with the Olympic team and all that, and we were traveling all across the world, Lou Duva and them guys was the guys that was taking care of Oscar. They were sending Oscar money like every week, sending him like 10, 20,000 every week when we was going on trips and Oscar was buying a whole bunch of stuff and spending money. Back then, man, that's when we was gambling like crazy. We was in our rooms gambling. Oscar used to have all his money and be betting and stuff. So, you know, it those was fun times, but, you know, that's what happened. When it came to Oscar, and then um, he fought. Remember when he fought um, Jesse James Leha, and he knocked Jesse James Leha. Guess who he was supposed to fight? I guess he was supposed to fight you. He was supposed to. Yeah, you're right. He was supposed <laughs> to. He gave. He gave. He well before he fought Jesse James Leha. He that's one thing I can say about him. He was man enough to do that. He called me. And asked me, did I want to fight? And I was like, you calling me to ask me, do I want to fight? I was like, yeah, I'll fight you. I was like, what are we fighting for? He was like, well, um, I'll fight you for 250000 I was like, for what? He like, 250000 I told my manager, I was like, what you think? My manager was like, no, nah, we should get more money. I was like, all right, but I'll fight you for 250000 if that's what he wants. Then he was like, no, I don't want to fight you for no more. Because we were trying to get more money from him. Top ranking up was like, no, nah, we don't want to fight him. I like, well, we'll take the 250000 He was like, nah, we cool. I like, so y'all want to fight with 250000 We said we want more. So now we bring it back down to 250000 And y'all still said no? All right, man, go ahead. We, we cool. We didn't We didn't want to, um, they didn't want to fight me. We didn't, we didn't take it. But a lot of people say they feel as though that that's where, I made a mistake in my career. I was like, well, why? Because people saying that if I would have fought get, uh, De La Hoya and lost to him, it would have made my stock go higher. I don't think so. I don't think it would have made my stock go higher because at that time when Oscar was offering me that money, of course, that was the most money at that time for me to be getting. I think I was only like, I think I was like 13 and 0 at the time when he offered me that money. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it would have been, a, it would have definitely help me but you know in the long run i made more money a lot more money and and you know even though i only got one world championship fight you figure the money that i made nobody would have made that type of money unless they would have been fighting for a world title so my man i believe my manager did a great job although you know people telling me he could have done a lot more better but who cares i mean you do care, but I think I had a fabulous career, man. I think I've been, I've done great things. Um, I've been all around the world, seen a lot of things, been many places. Um, I fought all the top amateurs. Ain't ain't no amateur I ducked, so I fought them all, and I came through with a bunch of great champions. You know, came through with Chris Bird, De La Hoya, Eric Griffin, uh, uh. Montel Griffin, uh, Larry Donald, you know, a whole bunch. Sergio Reyes. I ain't even talking about the guys that was that was like second string guys, man. It was just a whole bunch of guys that I, you know, grew up with and I love. Like we just lost a, a good friend of ours, Sean Fletcher, who was in the Navy. He was a good amateur, a great amateur, not so good of a pro, but he that had a great pro career, you know. So I, I'm thankful for God for letting me, you know, see those guys and be around those guys. Nah, yeah. I mean, 
I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that the stock would have dropped the rise because I mean it go it go it went both ways with De La Hoya because you know I feel like the guys that beat him were the guys stock that rose you know you know when Pacquiao beat him that put Pacquiao on a pedestal on a bigger pedestal you know well you gotta look at you gotta look at how that was done he fought and then I I I mean you know boxing is boxing. Boxing is a great sport. I've never taken nothing away from boxing. Boxing has got me to where, you know, I'm comfortable in life. Um, I made some great decisions. Um, I made some terrible decisions, too. Um, if you ask me would I do it all over again, hell, excuse my expression, hell no. I'll probably do it the same way I did it before, but I'll probably be a little more different on how I do it. Um I probably would be a lot, lot, lot more humble than what I am now. I'm very, I'm very humble now. But if I would have been humble more back then, I'd probably be probably be bigger than what I am now. But that that don't matter to me. You know, when I was coming up, it didn't matter to me about me having a whole lot of money. It didn't matter about me um making a whole lot of money. Me, I was the type of guy. I was just thankful for guys like you. I'm thankful for all the media who reaches out to me now and talks to me. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to do this. You ain't had to call me. You ain't had to reach out to me and ask me that I want to talk to you. You could have just walked. You could have just skipped by me. You could have went underneath me. You could have went around me. There's a lot of things you could have did. So I'm thankful for you just shit knowing my career, just knowing me, period, and reaching out to me. That's all that mattered to me. I'm not one of those guys that got to have a whole lot of money or got to have 50 cars or have a house with 40 bathrooms. Man, that, excuse my expression. That shit don't mean nothing to me. I'm a kid from Philly, from North Philly. I know what it was to be or have friends that had roaches in the crib, niggas ate cold oatmeal. I'm That's the type of kid I am. I'm from Philly. I grew up like that. So it don't matter to me. But yes, I want the next generation to know what it's like for me to go through what I went through and, you know, do even bigger and better things, man. And, you know, all this killing and stuff that's out here in the world, man, I wish we could just, I just wish it could just all stop. No, I get it.